Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining. Today, I want, I'm going to talk to you about how to utilize machine learning in ads. My name is Nastran Kedar, and I'm an engineering manager at Twitter. So before getting into details, I'm going to go over the overview of the material that I want to talk to you about. So we'll start with terms of AI and machine learning and how they correlate and basically what we need for a machine learning system to work. And then we specifically go into uh, the steps through an ads funnel. Uh, some of these steps are ads prediction, ads auction, uh, the platform where we serve ads. Uh, then we shortly talk about some of common challenges that we face in ads prediction, and eventually we conclude this talk. So uh, we hear the terms AI, machine learning a lot, but what do we mean by artificial intelligence or AI? And is it the same thing as machine learning or ML? So to give you a bit of more context, artificial intelligence is a broader term that completely explains all the technologies that can perform tasks that traditionally require human intelligence to do them. For example, we can use AI in all aspects of life, uh, from self-driving cars to like prediction, to building machines that are smarter, to building robots, and so on. But machine learning specifically talks about where machines can use data to improve their functioning by learning from that data and predicting what to do next. So there's an example of a machine learning system and how it's like a black box that you throw a big pile of data and then you ask it a question and it gives you an answer. But basically, this pile of data that you are pushing through this uh, machine learning system might not give you the right answer. What do you do then? Um, so the answer is simple. Basically, you stir the pile until you get the right answer. So this example is trying to show that machine learning is very dependent on the data and the interpretation of the data. So it's crucial to understand how this system works. So when we are trying to get more precise answers, better results, we know how to interpret the data or how to gather features from the data so we can have a better machine learning system. So what is the mission for advertisers when uh, they come like to social media apps and they want to basically engage with uh, the apps uh, to build the smarter apps for the users. Um, so the goal is that they want to deliver personalized ads. Basically this way they maximize the value both for the customers and the businesses. So the businesses are trying to attract people to their products, but they need to make sure that people are interested in seeing what they are showing them. Otherwise, it can have a negative impact. So by creating uh, good ads that the users are engaging with, uh, businesses reach customers affordably and users have a better experience. How we can use machine learning to determine which ads to show to people is basically the mission uh, of using ML in advertisement. Our goal is to make ads as relevant as possible uh, to compare with organic content by using state-of-the-art machine learning algorithms. So we said that we want to use machine learning to improve the engagement of users with ads. But how can we do that? And we previously also talked about how data plays an important role in the machine learning system. Basically, we need to gather understanding from the data to be able to use the historic data to predict the future. And by doing feature engineering, we would be able to do so. 
Wikipedia says that feature engineering is the process of using domain knowledge of the data to create features that make machine learning algorithms work. So interpretation and understanding the data is crucial. Um, there are historic data of different kinds and the importance of different types of data is different. For example, we might have different information about the user, but not all of them are relevant to a specific app. So we need to make sure that we are using the relevant features of this data to our prediction system so we can have a better estimation of what this user may engage with or what they may not engage with. So Andrew Ng says that coming up with features is difficult, time consuming, and it requires expert knowledge. Applied machine learning is basically feature engineering. Exactly uh, the main problem in a machine learning system is the data, not just how to interpret the data, the size of the data, uh, what is relevant, what is not relevant. Uh, and basically answering these questions can help us create a good machine learning system that is capable of predicting the behavior of um, users. So we talked about the ads funnel, and we said that uh, there are different steps in an ads funnel where uh, machine learning can help. So to talk about some of these steps, let's think about a scenario where the user is uh, um, coming up on a social media app, and the advertiser, there are different advertisers which wants to show this user specific ad. So this user has some specifications, like uh, they have identified their gender, their age, their number of followers we can get from the app. And based on these, uh, there are different stages that our funnel goes through to decide which ad is the best one to show to this specific user. So on the top of this funnel, we are targeting, uh, we have a targeting stage where uh, basically we can decide what ads are a good fit for this user and what ads are not. For example, if a user is a high school, like uh, is in high school based on their age, uh, and the followers that they have, we can decide that like a product for seniors might not be a good fit for them. And uh, so like an clo a clothing item that is for senior folks might not be a good fit, fit for like a 16 year old. And this way we can eliminate the ads that uh, are more likely that this user will not engage with. And there are other factors that we can consider based on the user information that we have, uh, their friends, uh, who they follow, who they engage with, and have an initial filter of uh, what this user may not like and what this uh, user may like. So after targeting is done and uh, we have created a smaller pool of um, ads that this user may engage with comes a prediction stage. And in this prediction stage, which we will go deeper uh, in the next slides, we are basically deciding which ad is most likely this user, uh, for this user to be engaging with. Uh, so basically from product A, product B, and product C, that the ad, the, like the, there are three ads, uh, which is the one that we think are, uh, which is the ad that we think that this user may be engaging with. And how do we decide that? This is again, based on the data that uh, the historic data that we have gathered. And finally, uh, let's say that we have uh, estimated the probability of engagement for these three ads. Now we want to know that which ad has the best expected revenue for uh, both the business and the social media because uh, showing different ads will cost 
the advertisers, but we want to make sure that we are maximizing their revenue. So if there are three ads that are uh, that user A may engage with, um, and they are more, all of them are likely that the user will engage with, which one will co- uh, create more revenue. Um, so based on that, the uh, advertiser can decide which ad to pick. So uh, we talked about the targeting stage, and uh, we said that basically the way we use that is to have an initial filtering of uh, the users that we think might be a good fit versus the users that we think might not be a good fit. But um, the, uh, the next part, as we said, is the ads prediction part, which the objective here is to learn a function to predict click-through rate given historical impressions and clicks. So basically, by having the engagements, the historic engagements of the user, we want to see if we can predict and learn a function that can predict whether this user will engage with another ad in the future. And our training data, as we said, every machine learning system uh, depends on training data. And our, our training data in ads prediction is the historical ad impressions and clicks with some labels. Um, so we need to have um, the historic data of that user. And the more data we have, the more accurate our machine learning system can predict, uh, uh, the more accurate it is, and the more accurate it can predict uh, the engagement of the user in future with specific ads. So we said that when we have the training data, we need to gather features uh, from this training data to input to this machine learning system. So some of these uh, features are different categories. So these features have different categories. Some are the user side features like device type, historical behaviors, etc. Uh, some are ad side features like category of features, media type, and um, some are features from both like counting features, etc. So uh, we dig a little bit deeper into features uh, in the coming X slide. But before going to that, we talked about prediction, but what are we exactly predicting? So basically, we are predicting the probability of click-through click rate. And what I mean by that is the probability of a click given if we show this candidate ad to this user in this context. So in the example on the right, um, you see like a Twitter um, timeline home that the user has opened. There is some context, like there is a a tweet that the user is uh, reading or engaging with. And then based on that, uh, there's a candidate ad that is shown to the user. So we want to uh, basically predict how likely is it that this user may click this ad or engage with it in any way. Like if it, um, it, it seems to be a video, so if the user will uh, engage with this ad by clicking, or if it's a website, by like going to the website. If it's uh, an app to be installed, whether they will install the app. If it's a video, uh, they will play the video. Any, any sort of engagement with the ad, how likely it is that this user will engage with this ad. And um, there's a lot of useful information to have to be able to predict so the context is crucial in understanding whether the user is uh, probable to click on that or like engaging on that in any way. And uh, we already talked about the user information and um, ads site features that we can use. So as mentioned before, there are different type of features that we can gather both from the user and the ad site to create this uh, uh, machine learning training data uh, that can help us predict uh, whether the user engages with an ad or not. So some of these features are like targeting features, like talked about like uh, who the user is in terms of like their gender, their age, number of followers, 
um, counting features, context of uh, uh, the ad, and uh, like the uh, uh, content of uh, basically the information that we have. Um, Real-time features, like how long they are staying on this ad. Um, if they are ad fatigue, they are not clicking on any ads. Uh, advertiser side of features and uh, app features of uh, its own. So uh, after creating these features out of the historic data, uh, we can train our machine learning system with the labels that we have created to uh, predict whether the user will engage with an ad or not. And we talked about that after prediction, uh, one of the major parts in the ads funnel is um, uh, the ranking part. And um, think about an ads auction, like a real auction, where advertisers are the people who are uh, basically uh, uh, on the site to bid on an item. And <laughs> our machine learning algorithm uh, is the person who is announcing the winners and deciding who gets to pick uh, to pick uh, the bid and basically win the bid. And uh, our social media is or the platform that uh, the advertisers are serving the ad is uh, basically the bidding um, auction. So advertisers are bidding to uh, win who will. Uh, uh, show their ad um, on 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 the social media app, and um, this is after deciding whether a user, a specific user, will engage with this ad. So, let's say that we have a slot for an ad uh, on the social media uh, app, and we have ten advertisers that are interested in an slot. How do we choose which uh, which slot to pick? and which uh, advertiser gets to pick this slot. Uh, so that's where the ranking uh, service comes in. Um, think about uh, the rank score as a, a score where it decides which um, bid wins. Um, so the formula for the rank score is the uh, probability of click-through rate, which we um, calculated in the prediction stage times the bid. So let's say that we have um, uh, different advertisers, like two different advertisers. Uh, one bid uh, $1 and the other one uh, bids 50 cents. But our probability uh, calculated in the previous stage where user A uh, will click on uh, the first ad is 2% and our probability uh, on clicking on the second ad is 20%. So if we use the formula, which was uh, uh, probability of click-through rate times bid, for the rank score of the first ad, we get 0 0.02 and for the second one, we get 0.1 which means that the rank score of the second ad is higher than the rank score of the first ad. So although the bidding of the first advertiser was higher than the bidding of the second advertiser, because the prediction uh, calculated that the probability of the user clicking on the second ad is higher, we are saying that the second ad has a higher rank score, which means more revenue, which means that this ad is the one that is going to be picked to be shown on that slot. So we talked about different stages of uh, the ads funnel. We targeted specific users um, or we eliminated some users. Then we predicted whether um, how likely the ad uh, and the user, uh, like the user will engage with the ad and eventually um, uh, which one creates the best revenue or the highest revenue. So, but this is a complex system that needs to be served on a platform. So the ML infrastructure uh, or the ads platform um, is the part where all of these parts uh, lay on where 
And we have different sections like uh, the targeting section, the prediction section, and the ranking store section and other sections. And on top of that, we can have personalization layer where uh, basically uh, we can create new features, new algorithms, and um, like uh, think about analytics or uh, reviewing what we have made so far to make sure that uh, this is relevant for uh, different users. And if not, how we can loop uh, some more of these analytics back into the system to be able to build new applications. And uh, on top of uh, everything is the applications where the user is uh, basically uh, served with uh, the ads. Um, so, um, as uh, mentioned, the ML infrastructure is very complicated, especially since uh, like there are so many millions of millions of users and several advertisers who uh, want to take slots on different social media apps. And these uh, there are users that we don't want to uh, create uh, bad experiences for them by showing them irrelevant ads. And at the same time, we want to make sure that the advertisers get uh, best of uh, their investment and uh, uh, can basically use uh, their money and their uh, slots in the best way possible to create a, a healthy experience both for the user and advertiser. Um, so the ML infrastructure is very complicated and has to deal with a lot of different users, a lot of training data, and uh, different applications. So um, it is it could create a lot of challenges, and uh, it needs like regular attention. Uh, maintenance is very hard, and um, like one of the hardest parts of uh, the ads prediction. Uh, is the platform side. So um, we talked that, um, let's say, uh, we have decided what ads to show the user, and we have built a machine learning system with the training data uh, that we gathered. We built some features out of those, and uh, uh, we think that we built a machine learning system that can predict um, and rank uh, the ads in the best possible way. But what are some of the common challenges apart from the uh, platform, uh, which is very complicated and challenging? So one thing to consider and uh, take note of is that most of uh, these uh, like ads are being served in real-time products. Uh, what, the, what does it mean? I mean when we say real-time products, we mean that the users may change their interests and intent in real time. For example, let's say there's an event happening and um, uh, basically a user is interested in that event. And because of their interest in that event that is happening like in a few hours, some ads might be relevant to show to the user. But after a few hours when the event is passed, then this is not uh, this is no longer relevant, which means that uh, uh, basically the intent of the ad, like the intent and interest of the user, changes in real time. Same with context. Um, so an event uh, like an ad or an event that is happening soon might be relevant, but in a few hours it might not be relevant anymore. And we need to also take note that new advertisers come in. Uh, every day, new campaigns, new ads are added in real time, and deciding between the new ads, which one is uh, winning the bidding, is really hard and challenging. So why do we say it's challenging? It's because uh, we are getting new data, and this data is changing. The labels for this data is changing, and with more training data, the model quality training delays in the data, the model quality shrinks. Uh, which uh, totally makes sense. So another challenge is the delayed feedback that we get. So uh, we said that we are measuring the engagement of the user if the user engages with the ad in a way, like click on them, install the app, 
watch the video, but what if the user doesn't do that immediately? How long do we wait to, till we say that this user is not engaging with this ad or is engaging with this ad? A second, a minute, an hour, a day? Uh, so why do we say it's a challenge? Because before assigning the labels, um, we cannot uh, know how long to wait until we get the, uh, we get the results. Uh, so should we wait before assigning the label? Or if we should wait, how long should we wait? This delay means that our training data is not accurate. And if we are not waiting, how do we decide the labels of uh, the data? Are we saying that this user engaged with this app uh, if they install it in an hour, or are we saying that they did not? So these all um, make uh, the prediction system less precise because of uh, the inaccuracies in data and our interpretations of the data. So these were just like a bunch of challenges that we face in um, the uh, processing of ML uh, and data in advertisement. But to conclude in this talk, um, I wanted to emphasize that ML has revolutionized the way advertising works. Um, this, the using the historic data has made it possible to create relevant and personalized experiences for the users. Uh, where we can improve the quality of ads and create a better experience for users. Um, so as we talked about uh, targeting, prediction, and ranking are some of the steps in the ads funnel that can create relevant ads for the users, but there are several challenges to make better and more relevant ads for the users uh, as time delays um, and real-time systems have many, many issues uh, that we need to deal with on time and online. Um, so with this, I would like to conclude this talk. I uh, enjoyed talking to you about um, machine learning in ads. And uh, thank you for listening. If you have any questions, I would be happy to answer too. Thank you.